Hey guys, Oscar here for Not A Grouch, and today's video is actually from an old video I recorded back in December. See, in December I recorded a bunch of videos that were slightly off topic, a little bit political even. And while this particular one is not political, it does have to do a lot with our political process, the Bill of Rights, specifically the First Amendment. And I wanted you to watch it and at least be exposed to the topic I'm talking about in there. Like I said, it's a little bit out of date, although the principle is not. The video, the news happened back in December. But I also do want you to understand what a First Amendment audit is. So that's what, we, what I talk about. And the edits are a little bit weird, but I still wanted you to watch it and stuff. So if you have any questions, let me know. And without further ado, here's the video. Hey guys, Oscar here for notagrouch.com. I recently heard about a judgment, I believe, or a ruling by a judge in, I believe it was Massachusetts, that determined that it is constitutionally legal to record cops in the course of their duties in public undercover. In other words, you can hide, you can covertly record public officials as you should have been able to for a long time. Wiretap laws can be unconstitutional. So the reason why this is important is because, and you may not know because, you know, it's not something that is covered by the mainstream media as much as it should be because it's not sensational. It's not outrageous. So it's actually a bit dull. And a lot of people think, oh, you know what? Who cares? The problem is, that we should care. We should care that we're losing our freedoms and our rights. And so there's a couple of people that, well not people, a couple of groups that are constantly testing to make sure our rights are not being infringed upon and eroded. For example, Project Veritas, they are a journalistic outlet and what they've been doing I believe since they started, if not at least for the past like five to six years, is that they do undercover reporting and they go in with uh, hidden cameras and record to see what's going on. Now, a lot of people do that. I don't understand why the big deal, what the, what the big deal is. That's happened for as long as I remember watching TV forever. I mean, how many shows have we seen of Oh, this scam exposed or this other thing revealed. And you see that, you know, people walk into an establishment with a purse and a hidden camera and they do their thing and then they report on it in like uh, 60 Minutes or 2020 or those kind of shows. I'm not saying they specifically do that, but those kind of shows, those kind of news outlets. So Project Veritas is getting a lot of heat because People that were exposed didn't like the fact that they were exposed, of course. And they're claiming that the project, the, the project violated the law. That's one group. The other group is really what I wanted to tell you about. Uh, and it's a, a project or a movement, but it's certainly very important. And it has not gotten any mainstream coverage, sig any significant mainstream coverage. This thing that I'm telling you about is called First Amendment Audit. First Amendment Audit. Look it up. Go to YouTube, type in First Amendment Audit, and you're going to find thousands of videos related to this. Hopefully, you come to the agreement with me that these videos are important. Not the videos themselves, but the activities and the people that are doing them are important to maintain our freedom because... Everybody talks about the First Amendment as freedom of speech, right? But they forget the other parts of the First Amendment, which means freedom of the press, freedom of assembly. So some people don't understand that, and they think that because they don't like something or because they're offended by something, then somebody else's rights should be infringed upon and limited. For example, what I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the First Amendment audits because... I do want to explain a little bit of how it works and why I like them and why I think they're so important. So then you can make up your mind and then tell me if you agree. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. Tell me why. First Amendment audits are there to protect us 
from people trying to take away some of the principles of the First Amendment. For example, freedom of the press. Freedom of the press says that you can create or talk about and report on news for the purpose of dissemination, of, you know, for the purpose of telling people about it, whatever event may be, and the government and nobody has a right to impede on that. Of course, private property is another story. So these people go out and they record public places, city halls, courthouses, police stations, fire stations, uh, post offices. The audits are really there to just test people's knowledge of the law and to remind them of their rights. And when I say people, I mean everybody, not just like people like you and me. And in fact, mostly not people like you and me. First Amendment audits are designed to test the government and companies that think the government protects them instead of protecting the citizens, instead of defending the people and protecting the people. So in any case, what they do is they go out to places like public places, like post offices, uh, police stations, fire stations, city halls, those sort of things, and they record. They just sit there and record, document their whole place. If they have exhibits, like, you know, sometimes at police stations they have a fallen, fallen officer memorial, or they have plaques and awards and stuff like that. So they go and record that kind of stuff. If they have posters with policies, if they have special services, they record all that, and then they post them on their channel. They also go out to companies that may be subsidized by the government or contracted by the government, you know, defense contractors, chemical security, stuff like that. And they do, is, what they do is they just kind of record the outside of the building. They never go into those places because they know they're not allowed to and it's private property. Invariably, when they have, well, I can't say all the time, but I would say 80% of the time, that's just, I'm just making up that number. I would say 80% of the time, somebody will come out and confront the person, say, what are you doing recording? What are you recording? Blah, blah, blah. Sometimes the interaction is good and pleasant and nice and people are just curious and they want to know what's up. Other times it turns confrontational and the person approaching the auditor demands that they shut off the camera so they leave the premises when in reality they have no authority to do that. They can't ask somebody to stop recording in public place. It doesn't matter if it's your face or your company or anything else. If you can see something from a public space, you can film it. End of story. No asterisk, no anything. If you are in a place that you are legally allowed to be, then you can record. And yes, that means somebody could come in to your neighborhood, sit in the, on the sidewalk or stand on the sidewalk and record into your house through your windows because that's what it is. If you don't like that, close your blinds. Also, people that happen to be at a Department of Motor Vehicles, for example, and they say, oh, don't put my, don't record me. That's too bad. You're in a public space. You're in a tax-funded business, basically and it belongs to everybody and it's part of the government. And we have a First Amendment right to film there. Now, keep in mind, this is not for commercial purposes. This is mostly for news purposes, for reporting or for your own use. And all of these have been challenged for a long time. There's, there's been court cases and most of the court cases that have actually gone to uh, a district I believe it's a Supreme Court, not Supreme Court, uh, a district court have ruled in favor of the auditor because at the end of the day, it is a right to freedom of press. You don't have to have credentials to be press. You don't have to be accredited. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have anything. Press is anybody that wants to report an event to somebody else. 
So you could go to anywhere that you are allowed to be that's public and record and report back. You can put it on YouTube, you can put a blog post about it, you can put it on a thumb drive and mail it to your friend, it doesn't matter. As long as you are not, the intent is not to be, and actually don't quote me on this, I'm this, this may not even be true, but as long as you're not filming, let's say a commercial movie, you know, with the actors and the end result is a commercial project, then you're probably okay to be recording. But the thing that happened that was exciting, or not exciting, but just reassuring that we're not in a totally bad place is that the Massachusetts judge, I'll have links down in the description below, the Massachusetts judge decided or ju uh, ruled that it's perfectly fine to record police covertly. And that's how it should be. Because you know what, there's a lot of unjustified, <clears throat> unjustified police brutality and abuse and even killings that would be really, really, I think they will be cur curtailed if we, bec we become so aware that there may always be a camera that the cops just won't do it because they want to keep their jobs. They don't. I believe that most cops that end up abusing their power do it out of having a bad day, they're frustrated, they're dealing with somebody that is rowdy or they're not complying. I don't think that cops get into their uniform in the morning and decide, today I'm gonna violate somebody's rights. I don't think that that's what they do. I, I, I really don't. But I do think that if nobody holds them accountable, then it's easy for them to lose their temper and it's easier for them to say, I can make up my own report. And they do all the time. These auditors have exposed dozens and dozens of false reports. How do they do that? They do it by filming an event and an interaction. And then when the cops come out, there's a, there may be an altercation. Sometimes they get arrested. And what happens then is they go through the process. They come out from jail a couple days later. and. Then they go and do what's called a FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, uh, a FOIA request, uh, a Freedom of Information Act request for information. And they go to the police station and say, I want the body footage from all these cops from this day to this day to this hours, blah, blah, blah. And you will not believe how many cops blatantly lie about what happened in their reports. And uh, unfortunately, it's so difficult to get the video to be part of the official report. The report that really has the most weight <clears throat> when an incident happens is a report that a cop writes and submits to their supervisor or to their department. That is taken as the word. That is taken as the thing that happened, that that's what it is. When there's evidence that the events that took place are quite different. And there's a lot of good people out there that are trying to change that and say, look, you can't be lying about that stuff. Just because you didn't like how something turned out, you, you can't just ruin somebody's life. An arrest, a simple arrest can ruin someone's life for the next 10, 20 years. Just an arrest. Now, if someone was convicted under false pretense, that would definitely ruin someone's life. So this judgment by that judge in Massachusetts really, really um, makes a really, really good statement of what our First Amendment, uh, First Amendment means. So go take a look, read more about it, educate yourself on this. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.